Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. There is no better way to create memories with a child, positive, reinforcing memories, than spending time. And I found one of the best ways to spend time with a young child in particular is to do an art project. And a wonderful art project that we're going to learn about today is how to create stamps that you can use with your child. This is a perfect project to do around the holiday seasons. You could do bunnies, you can do frogs, um, you can also do text. Um, here's an example with some text. And this is all possible with an inexpensive $180 3D printer and a little bit of instruction, learning a couple software programs that are easy to use and learning a little bit about the nature of filament. Okay, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Okay, to produce our stamps today, we need two pieces of software and we need to talk about a technique. The technique is how to print with flexible material called TPU on a printer. Whether you need a high-end printer to do that, the answer is no, but you need a printer with the right extruder, the right component that presses the filament. I'm going to be doing it today on a $180 mono price select mini printer. So you can really do it on any price printer if you have the right component. Let's get started with the software. Both pieces of software we're going to install today are open source. They're free to use. Um, there's no price, there's no licensing, or there's no restrictive licensing. So we're gonna start by going to matterhackers.com. We're going to go to the store, which you get to right here. And then under the store, we're going to select software and add-ons. We're going to go to Matter Control, download the appropriate version for your computer, and get it installed. The next software we're going to need is called GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. An image is just a computer term. It's also used in photography, but it's a computer term for a picture. GIMP is a open source program for manipulating pictures. Many of you may have heard of Photoshop. Photoshop is an expensive alternative. Um, it does more than GIMP does. It's easier to use. It's more sophisticated. For our purposes, this is just perfect. So click on the download button, select the version for your computer, and we're ready to go. Now, once those are both downloaded, we're going to start with Matter Control, showing you how to make very simple stencils using built-in capabilities. Then we're going to enhance those capabilities by using GIMP. Then we're gonna talk about printing with flexible material. So I'm going to open up Matter Control. Matter In Matter Control, you first configure a printer. Um, I'll show you a link on the upper right-hand right side where you can uh, look at another video doing that. I'm going to select my mini select. I'm going to open it up. And then Matter Control knows the size of the print area. Uh, just as a quick refresher, if you press down the right mouse button and move up and to the sides, you can change your view. You can also change your view by clicking on the box on the side. You can go back to the original view by clicking on Home. This gray image here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh icon down, it's the image you use in order to take a two-dimensional drawing and make it three-dimensional. When you first bring it into the screen, it shows you the Matter Hacker logo. But we don't want to use the Matter Hacker logo, so we're going to click on this magnifying glass, and we're going to search for a bunny. Now, when the search comes up, we'll see that some of these searches are returning images from licensed websites, such as Shutterstock, where you have to pay for the image to use it legally. Um, we don't want to do that, so we're going to add the word free on the end of the Google search and search a second time. Now we're going to select a bunny. When it comes up in a larger image, we're going to right-click in our browser and say Save Image As. And we're going to save it as, as Bunny getting started. 
Now, it's very important, this is a PNG image. The image conversion program um, on Matter Control works very good with PNG. Uh, I'm not sure it supports JPEG. So we'll look at a technique for converting that if you need to. But right now, we're going to look for a PNG image. We're going to save that. Now, we're going to go into Matter Control again. We're going to click on the button that says Change. And we're going to find our bunny. Click Open. And immediately, you will see it created for us a three-dimensional image. Now, we could take that image, print it, and glue it directly onto a backing material, let's say a block of wood, and that would work just fine. But I find having some plastic around it makes it stay better on the backing material. So we're going to go down here to base type. We're going to say rectangle. Now we need to think about the base. The base doesn't need to be very high. We're going to make the extrusion height one millimeter. We're going to leave the bunny at five. And now we can go ahead and print this bunny, glue it to a block of wood, and we're all set. But in this example here, you'll see I have an outline and it's on a base. So how did I do that? Okay, now let's open up GIMP and use that to manipulate this bunny so that we can create a stencil with an outline. So to do that, we're going to open up GIMP. And it looks very complicated at first. There's many, many icons, but we're going to simplify this. We're going to go to open. Let's open that up. And there's our bunny. Now we want to convert this from a black solid to an outline. So there are a number of ways to do this. I'm going to show you a way that was intuitive to me. The first thing we're going to do is click on these three red colored dots, green, red, blue. That is a tool that will select by color. Then we're going to click in the bunny. I'm left clicking. So it's now selected the bunny. You can see it's selected because it's white over here. Now we're going to click on our paint bucket, but we're going to click on the color here and change the color. You can pick any color. It doesn't really matter. And then we're going to click in the bunny area, which was selected, and it's now red. That's just going to make it easier for us to get rid of the solid area later. Now, since the bunny is already selected, we can go to Edit Stroke Selection. That means draw a line around the selection. We want to draw a one millimeter line because if you make something too thin, this stamp really won't work very well. So we're going to draw a one millimeter line. But first, we're going to change our color here back to black. So now let's go to Edit, Stroke again. One millimeter line. Make sure anti-aliasing is off. That would mean make it soft around the edges. We don't want to do that. And click Stroke. And now we have a, red, a black round line around our bunny. Now we're going to select None. And now let's go and click our color selector and select just the red. Now we're going to go to our paintbrush. If you click these little arrows, it will reverse these two squares. We're going to select white and paint our bunny white. Select None and we're ready to go. But you'll see on here, there was a little bit of space around our bunny. Here, there doesn't seem to be any space. So we're going to go to Image and Canvas Size, and we'll make it just a little bit bigger. And we're gonna tell it to center on our canvas all layers, white, resize. And now we have a bunny centered on our canvas, um, ready to produce a stamp. Ah, but the eye is missing because we didn't select that separately. So we could go to one more tool. This is the paintbrush. Let's select black, make sure black is selected. And see the circle here? That's the size. If you use the left 
square bracket, it will make it smaller. If you push on the right square bracket, it will make it bigger. And let's put an I back in there. We can also use the pencil to get rid of the little line around the edge of the bunny. So if I reverse the color, so white is in the foreground, and I can take and fix this bunny up a little bit here. And you get the idea. Okay, now, if we're going to use this in matter control, we have to save it. If we save it from GIMP save, it won't be saved in the right format. So instead, we're going to do an export. And that's going to default to PNG because the original image was PNG. And the, if the original image was something else, you have to just over type the extension here and change it to PNG and say export. Now we can go back to matter control, drag an image control on here, click change, bunny getting started, and we can bring that in. And now we have a nice stamp. As soon as we put a base on it, base rectangular. And that's how I produced this bunny. Okay, let's turn to the printer and we're gonna talk about printing flexible Media. Okay, now that we've produced our stamp, our plastic, we need to prepare it for use. Um, and the way I like to do that is I like to go to a craft store or a hobby store and get some little blocks of wood. Um, these are very, very inexpensive. You can get them in pre-cut shapes and sizes. And then my preferred way to glue the stencil onto a block of wood is just a little bit of super glue, of CA glue. However, uh, a lot of people recommend uh, using spray adhesive for this. I find this creates fumes, it's a little messier. So I find a couple drops of CA glue. Then you need to buy stamp pads. Now I have two sets here. This one works great, but in spite of the fact that it says it's washable, it's really not. Um, when I get this on my hands, I have to use that goop off stuff to get it off. Um, I really like this stamp pad. Um, it's a little bit too small for this bunny. It works great for the I Love You. And this is by Melissa and Doug. Um, and this is available online. I'll provide links for various stamp pads online. Now I have tried using um, water-based paints. This is tempura craft paint and painting them on. That does not work well. So I think it's worthwhile to get a real stamp pad. Now let's talk about the material these are made of. I tried making one with regular PLA. That's what's loaded in the printer over here. Um, and unfortunately the ink does not stick well. I also made some with Sane Smart, S-A-I-N Smart, TPU or flexible filament. I found that in spite of the fact that this is a very flexible material, it is very, very easy to print with. So I would recommend the same smart flexible material. Um, and the question is, can you print it on every printer? Well, that depends on the extruder. This component right here, where the filament feeds in, is called the extruder. It is a gear that pushes the filament. It can be loaded, it can be directly on top of the hot end of the um, nozzle component that heats up the filament, or it can be a distance away. If it's a distance away and connected by a tube, that's called a Bowden tube. In general, most people say that if you have a Bowden tube, you have top trouble with flexible filament. It's not the tube that necessarily is causing the problem, it's the extruder. If we look closely at the extruder, you'll see that there is a space potentially between the gear and the tube. If there is a large space there, and I'll put a picture on the corner of an example of an extruder for large space, and then I'll show you this one, then what happens is because the filament is very flexible, it tends to creep out of that space and cause a loop, and that loop gets stuck. And so printing TPU or flexible filament 
is really dependent on your extruder. You need an extruder that has very little open space before it presses the filament into the Bowden tube. The other thing that's a questionable is the length of the Bowden tube. If you have a printer with a very long Bowden tube, it'll cause you a little more trouble than a printer with a short Bowden tube. This is a Monoprice Mini Select version 2. It has a, an extruder that works very well with TPU, and I printed all of these on this printer. So what do you need to get started in making stamps? Well, I would recommend Matter Control by Matter Hacker. I think learning a little bit of GIMP is helpful, and you need a printer with a fairly tightly closed extruder, and then you need some TPU or flexible filament. Okay, I hope you learned something today that this was fun. Please go out and do a craft project with a child today, with your grandson, with your granddaughter, with your daughter. Spending time with children creates memories that reinforce their values. It's just a good, good thing to do. Thanks so much for watching. Um, let's continue to learn things together.